Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the Meet the Candidates Night for the Gail Borden Public Library trustees to be elected in the April 4th consolidated election. This event is hosted by the League of Women Voters of the Elgin area. My name is Shirley Mae Burns, and I will be the moderator tonight. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization that works to empower voters and encourage informed participation in our democracy. One of the ways that we do this is to hold candidate events or events like this to provide for voters the opportunity to hear the candidates running for election. The events sponsored by the League give candidates for local offices a chance to present information about themselves and their candidacy, background and skills, reasons for running for office, what they hope to accomplish if elected, and positions on various issues. All candidates in contested races were invited to participate. Each one was given the opportunity to fill out a candidate questionnaire on our website, and their written responses can be found by clicking on their name in the voter guide at lwvelginarea.org. The format of this evening will be different from past candidate forums. The candidates will have three minutes to introduce themselves. Then instead of specific questions from the moderator uh, the, and the audience, each will have two minutes to give their views on several topics. Each candidate will have an option to speak on all the topics or to skip one if he or she chooses. This evening, we have one opposed, unopposed candidate here that I will introduce and let her say a brief statement, and that is Elisa Laura, who's running unopposed for the two-year seat. So, Lisa. Thank you. This evening, we'll have a chance to hear from five of the six, six candidates for the four-year seats on the Gail Borden Public Library. Our timekeeper will show the candidates when they have one minute left, 30 seconds left, and when their time is up. We ask the audience members to please silence all cell phones whoops, I gotta silence mine, and remain silent and seated during the event. Excuse me while I do that. <clears throat> this event will be recorded and posted to the uh, League of Women Voters Elgin Area YouTube channel where it will be available for viewing via li links on our website lwvelginarea.org and our Facebook page. Tonight we have five of the six candidates for the four seats on the Gail Borden Library of Trustees. Jean Bednar, Enoch Essendrop, Amanda Garcia, Norma Grathoff, and Tim Tiffany Henderson. Laura Badello, the sixth candidate, was not able to attend because she's working in Springfield but our candidate questionnaire is included in the voter guide on our website, and you may read about her there. Welcome to our, to our candidates, and thank you for agreeing to participate tonight. Ms. Bednar, we will begin with your three-minute introduction, please. Oh, okay. Is this a good sound, Laura, over there? Okay. Well, um, I remember coming to my first forum like this, and I was very nervous. Uh, and I had the f good fortune of speaking right after Mr. Mike Alft. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
he knew everything about the library. He was a long-serving board member, a frequent flyer of libraries. He carried a list in his pocket of all the books he'd read from the library. He met his wife in a library. He even <laughs> authored books that I could check out from the library shelves. So he could have rattled off a long list of all his accomplishments at the library, but he did not do that. Instead, he talked about how much he enjoyed serving on the board, and he talked about the three Ps of library board service. The first one was the pay, which of course isn't a thing because we don't get paid, um, unlike some other elected positions in Elgin. The second P he listed was the perks, and um, really he went on to say there are no perks either for the library board. <laughs> Like, we even uh, didn't get excused from fines at the time when we used to charge them. So I can't, I honestly can't remember what the third P was, but you get the idea. He was, for his opening statement, he didn't brag or promise things um, or say his name over and over so you would remember to vote for him. He just did like a tongue-in-cheek thing to let the audience know that he was there for them. And um, so you're probably wondering, why am I taking my three minutes to talk about Mike Alft instead of me? Well... <laughs> because I think it's important that you know that I'm here for you too. I'd rather show you that by telling you a story of a great past trustee than to list all the good things that have happened at Gail Borden Library since I became a trustee, although you can read all of those in the Herald if you really need to know. And not to leave you hanging, that story about my first time at a forum like this, I did not get elected that time. But I did join the foundation and made some contributions there. I eventually got appointed to the board. And I've run for re-election several times since then. And I'm running again now. So I do want to point out a few key things. But just to be clear, I am not being tongue in cheek now. <laughs> um, first of all, I love this library and our amazingly talented staff. And I take my responsibility towards both very seriously. Uh, number two, there are a lot of people out there in our district who have a million different needs and uses for the library, and I need to listen to them respectfully, but when it's time for me to make decisions and vote, I do that with the greater good in mind as a library trustee. And number three, I try to never take myself too seriously. Um, I plan to continue to follow the Mike Elft Book of Life and try to always keep it fun. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Mr. Essendrop. Your three minute introduction, please. Good evening. I'm the gentleman with the name no one can pronounce. I have the red and white signs around time, town, but she gets it right, so thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, my name is Enoch Essendrop. Uh, I'm glad all of you guys were able to make it. Uh, I am 25, figured I'd clear the air before people started guessing my age. Um, had some people guess I was 47 recently, and that was quite, for me, that was tough, so I figured I'll just lead off with that. <laughs> I'm 25, uh, my wife and I are gonna celebrate five years of marriage this year. Uh, we're expecting our fourth child. We were blessed two years ago to be able to buy our first home, our starter home, and I'd be happy to die in that home, really. It's a beautiful little home on the north side on River Bluff, a whole bunch of great neighbors, great neighborhood. Uh, we're, we're happy to be a part of the community here in Elgin. I initially moved here in 2015. I've uh, been involved in a whole bunch of different things here in Elgin. Uh, went to school here in Elgin, both ECC and uh, another school as well. Uh, got married here in Elgin. Uh, my first daughter was born at the Sherman Hospital. Uh, a lot of history in my, my family here. Uh, I have other family that live here in town. We, we love this city. We love this library. Uh, I'm, I'm the seventh of 10 children. So I come from a pretty pretty different background, I guess. I, we grew up in Hampshire. Uh, it was always a, exciting to drive into town to go to the uh, Ella Johnson Memorial Library. Our 15-passenger van would bounce over the tracks, and we'd have to go park over at the, uh, at the post office because we couldn't park in town. And the 10 of us, we'd literally leave there hauling out 100 books, you know, because uh, if you're going to be going on a three-week vacation, you're going to read through a lot of books. And we read a lot of books growing up, and it, it brings a smile to my face, even though my kids are so young, to see them enjoying books from this library. And I want to make sure that this library remains first class, remains family friendly always. And uh, I want to make sure my kids can be here, grow here, and read all the books here in this library. Hopefully outdo me in the, the little I was able to do. Uh, so thank you all for coming tonight, and we look forward to having a lovely evening with you. Thank you. Ms. Garcia, your three-minute introduction, please. 
Yes, thank you. Thank you all for being here tonight. It's wonderful to have support and local elections just for people wanting to come out and be informed. So it's, it's lovely of you to come and spend some of your evening here with us tonight. Um, as a mother of a one and two year old, I appreciate the library as a place to get out of the house and find free entertainment. <laughs> as a small business owner here in Elgin who works remotely, I appreciate the library's quiet workspaces. As a homeowner in Elgin, I appreciate the library as the very best bang for our taxpayer dollars. As a Judson University graduate and a former online MBA student, I appreciate the reliable internet. As a writer and as a reader, I appreciate the River Room for its inspirational views and quiet nooks. As an Elginite, I take a great amount of pride in what I consider to be the gem of our city, this place. As Vice President of the Gail Borden Public Library Board of Trustees, I appreciate each and every one of my colleagues um, for the value they bring to our discussions and decision making, and I appreciate our library staff for their tremendous work in responsive, innovative problem solving. It's been an honor to serve on the board for the past six years, and I hope to continue to serve each of you, our library patrons and Elgin taxpayers, to equip you with the resources, the space, and inspiration you need to thrive in our community. For some, as Jean said, not our diverse community, that means being able to study. For others, attending an Excel tutorial or a conversation group to learn another language. Whatever programs or resources or materials our community needs, I believe the library exists to meet those needs. In the last six years, I've been privileged to see the addition of our bookmobile. Okay, now here's where I'm gonna list a couple of things that we did in the last six years. <laughs> um, bringing library resources to members of our community who didn't have easy access to a stationary branch. Many of them were children. I've been pleased to vote yes on passport services and license plate renewals. I love to support the phenomenal exhibits, pirate ships and such, that draw crowds from far away and from right down the street. The library exists to serve you, and my hope is that each of these offerings has made your life a little better, a little easier, a little more well-read. I've also had the challenge and honor of helping to guide the library through a global COVID shutdown and to brainstorm ways we might still serve the community even with closed doors. Things like drive-up services, delivery, digital resources, online programming. And in the coming years, I hope to offer leadership as our library staff shifts with the changing times, um, offer new resources, try and stay ahead of the curve of technology. I hope to continue to support our customers to listen to their needs, as Jean said, and to innovate new solutions to meet those needs. If elected, I'll continue to ask good questions, hold our staff accountable to their goals, consider every angle of a challenge and do my due diligence and work collaboratively to create solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Grafthoff, your three minute introduction, please. Hello. Is it on? Oh. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Can you, can you hear me? OK. My name is Norma Gradoff. Thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. Also, thank you um, to the League of Women uh, Women of Borders for inviting us to um, this forum. It is my pleasure to be running for a position as a board of trustee here at the library, Gail Borden Library. Again, my name is Norma Gradov. I am a resident in South Elgin. I've lived in the Fox Valley area for over 27 years. I am an insurance advisor for Country Financial. I attended Elgin Community College and also Columbia College of Missouri at the ECC campus where um, I obtained my bachelor's degree in management and finance. I take pride in being part of this community here in Elgin. I am a member of the Elgin Hispanic Network and the, Latino, the Elgin Latino Alliance for Seniors. It is important to me to be part of organizations um, as these two organizations I just mentioned because we work uh, together in providing services, supporting existing services, and also holding events um, that benefit all groups of residents in our area. 
just like this library does. Um, for me, it is very important uh, the role that a library plays in everyone's lives, no matter the age. Uh, me in particular, my family, we have always been, um, you know, involved in, in the use and all the resources that the library provides. I am a mother of two um, grown children. But I also work as an educator for several years uh, in the St. Charles um, School District. But the main reason that I am running for uh, the library, the Board of, Trust Board of Trustee Library, um, is because I feel that it is important that all communities are represented. Um, our library is part of what we pay in our taxes, and I feel that, you know, there is always room for more diversity in the board. So if elected, I'd be very honored uh, to work hard for everyone in, in our community. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Henderson? Good evening, and thank you all for coming um, and having um, us here today to let you know who we are as candidates. So I have been uh, with this wonderful library for the last six years. This is the best library in the world. I don't know if you know that. I don't know how many of you have been to other libraries around the country. I've lived in four states. I have visited every library in the places that I have lived, and this one is the best one. Are we all clear on that? Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so um, as you can tell, I'm very passionate about this library. I'm passionate because this library has given so much to me and my family and the people around me, and it is my honor to give back to it. I studied for the, my, for the bar exam here. I took a lot of time when I was young and I had I just moved here a couple of years prior and I really needed a space to learn and to grow so of course I was able to check out LSAT books and and then check out other books to help me study and this library is a great reason why I'm a great a great lawyer right now right now it is this library that provides resources to those who do not have it and to those who do this library is available for everyone. We provide exhibits for people with children. We provide uh, uh, programs for, for people who want to learn more, for continuing education, no matter how old you get, how young you are, you can glean something great from this library. And I want to be a good steward over what happens here. It is, it, is, it is my joy to bring to the table the level of expertise that I have. I have many, but that, it doesn't matter. What matters now is that over the last six years, we've done a great work, and I want to continue doing it. I've worked with these women in ways in which we have brought about great change and, and really looking towards the future for this great library. I want to make sure that other young people who don't have resources can come here and be lawyers as well. Doctors who can come in and be paleontologists and anthropologists. We can do it because we have the resources because we steward it well here at this great library. Thank you. Thank you. Now we are going to ask the candidates for their views on four pre-selected topics that were given to them in advance. The four topics for the Gail Borden Library trustee candidates are budget priorities and funding, serving a diverse community, book and program selection, issues and solutions, pick one. We'll start with budget priorities and funding. Ms. Bednar, you have two minutes to give us your views. Um, okay. I um, I just when I saw this topic, what it what it brought to mind right away was our amazing staff once again, because every year the board comes together to review a proposed budget. 
we have a couple months to um, come in, ask questions, look over all kinds of figures, um, talk to any one of the staff that we think can help us with what we need to know. We come together as a group at our meetings and we're able to ask questions there. And uh, every year we get what I would consider to be a stellar budget. I can remember years, I've been on the board for 18 years now, so I can remember years when the budget actually w went down from the previous year, when it has been flat, when it's gone up very slightly. There have been years when we've gotten the good news that, hey, um, our insurance um, company isn't gonna raise our rates this year, so we could use that money and put it over here. They have very sharp pencils here at Gail Borden, and we, we can depend on that. So I always feel very good about our budget. Um, I have always voted for it uh, very confidently. We have never had a problem. Uh, just like any other budget, your household budget, for example, when you aren't spending money over here, you can scoot it over there, and you know, uh, if you need extra money in this other category, those kinds of things happen, they don't need our approval, but we are able to stay within, we're able to spend within our means and talk uh, very intelligently about what's needed at the library and also what we want at the library, and our budget has always come through for us. So when I saw that topic, I was very happy that I would get a chance to talk about that to everybody in the room because it's easy when you're not on the board to think that the library needs this or spends too much money on that or why do they need these new machines already but it's all very carefully thought out and planned and the staff here does a great job. Thank you. Mr. Essendrop, what are your thoughts on budget priorities and funding? So I appreciate what Ms. Bednar had to say about some years it's gone down, some years it's remained flat, and uh, obviously just as a taxpayer you always appreciate when your bill doesn't go up, but we, we all get such great service from here at, here at the library. Uh, ideologically, my bend is I, I do not want to raise taxes on anybody, any families. Obviously, if our town grows and there's 100 new taxing units, maybe the levy goes up. If there's a population increase, we're serving more people, that makes sense. Uh, but I would like to not raise anyone's taxes. I, and I'm talking about just tax, tax freezes for seniors. I'm talking about tax freezes for everyone, every unit of government working together. Uh, I, we are a single income household. And I'm not trying to have anybody cry me a river about that. Uh, but we're expecting our fourth child. We live in a small home, and we love it. We're, we drive old cars, and we love it. Um, and I, I feel like people are very flippant about, it's just another $100. It's just another $10, every unit of government adding to each tax. And I, I think if all of us work together and determine to not raise taxes on anyone and, and really work hard to look where there could be waste, just anecdotally speaking, last summer we had a really good summer as far as rain goes. Uh, my grass did not need hardly any watering. It was really great. Uh, the mornings that I would come to the library to work on the computer, the sprinklers were going every morning. Uh, I, I have no idea what that costs, but I'm just saying there there is waste that occurs. I'm not accusing this library of being wasteful in everything, but there are things we can do to cut costs, always. And so I would like to propose not raising our budget, not increasing the levy, and helping the taxpayers like you, like myself, who enjoy this district and appreciate it, but do not, cannot afford to pay more. Thank you. Ms. Garcia, can you share your views? on budget priorities and funding. And only two minutes, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, yes, I was the treasurer for a couple of years on the board, so that was that was great fun. Um, shout out to our current uh, treasurer, Amy, out on the, on the gallery. Um, uh, I am really proud of the fact that a couple of years ago, we, uh, we had a referendum that allowed for us to transfer money that will allow us to accomplish several um, several goals without raising any taxes. Um, that, was, that was wonderful. We paid off several bonds, and uh, that was a huge thing. Um, and uh, uh, the, the amount, it's probably worth noting um, that the, the amount that Gail Borden spends per capita is so much lower than most of our area library districts. It's, it's almost terrible, because um, there are other districts who are so, we're the third largest in the state, and so many others spend so much more per person in the district. Um, if we had that kind of money, I just can't imagine what we would do, um, because, uh, as Jean said, very very tight pencils here. Um, but to uh, a couple of specific funding uh, 
of things that I am excited about in the coming months um, is first of all, well, first of all, I do feel it is our responsibility to hold the library accountable and to remain as fiscally responsible as uh, possible. That's our number one um, aim and responsibility. Um, also, things uh, like maintaining the library, spending money every year to maintain things like the parking lot and our computers. I, I can't believe how many years. We're replacing computers right now that have been here for five years, which they should be dead by now, and they're not, <laughs> um, because of the, the great care that we take of, of everything. And so those maintenance costs mean that we save a lot of larger costs down the road of having to completely replace things. Um, we get a lot of use, a lot of mileage out of our, out of our equipment. So that, and then using that referendum funding to, to expand the South Elgin branch, I'm very excited about that. Um, updating kids space, very excited about that. I, I'm particularly excited about the possibility of adding um, electric vehicle charging stations, um, as well as um, paying our staff liv livable wages and um, in increasing our um, meeting the $15 minimum wage requirement over the last few this I know I'm supposed to stop and I'm trying to finish my thought um, <laughs> <laughs> but that I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to be able to do that too and there's been a, a good structure for for in increasing that slowly over the years so that it w it's not just a windfall um, to, to meet that so I'll, I'll stop there but I can talk I'd be happy to talk about any of this afterward if anyone has questions <laughs> thank you um, Ms. Scratchoff what are your thoughts on the budget <laughs> yeah, priorities and funding? So is this microphone, m microphone working? OK, thanks. It's quite low. but So as you can tell, I am not as uh, familiar with the budget, the library budget. But I do know we do have quite a bit large budget. Um, $15 million come from, which is about 60% of the budget, comes from taxpayers. Um, as Mrs. Garcia mentioned, the South Elgin uh, branch expansion it's being uh, approved this year. It's a great deal, which I am also very excited about. I live just a few blocks from the South Elgin branch, so I would love to be part of you know the team that will be working on the on this expansion. Um, I mean, <laughs> money. Who likes to talk about money unless you have <laughs> unlimited funds, right? <laughs> then then we would be excited to talk about money, but nonetheless. Uh, it is important to prioritize, just like in any business um, <clears throat> or in any household as well. So for me, I think it would be very important to see uh, the expansion of existing services that have been put uh, in place recently, like the book mobile. Uh, also, like Mrs. I, I agree 100% with uh, Mrs. Garcia about um, having uh, stations for electric cars that will be amazing definitely but also to add to our digital digital equity that's something that we should definitely consider um, it, it within the budget so thank you thank you Ms. Henderson what are your views on budget priorities and funding first of all I just want to say that Amanda's passion is 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 exemplary <laughs> her going on and on but uh, my budget uh, the way I see our budget priorities um, and one thing that um, that is clear we have an extraordinary staff that they do an excellent job and I think I'll help finish Amanda's sentence Thank you. <laughs> our staff is is great at showing at at, at sustainability they make sure that they sustain all of our resources and they and they do a great job of making sure that we use every dollar that we are given um, to the best of their ability to ensure that it stays around that it's working for a long time that we get the biggest bang for our buck um, and so for priorities we want to make sure that sustainability is at the forefront that we purchase things that will last us a long time. We just approved um, a system that will um, that would make sure that this library keeps its um, 
uh, keeps the electricity and the energy and everything going for a long time. And so these are the types of things that we have to make sure we prioritize. And we've gotten a funding from a grant. We just received a multi-million dollar grant to expand. So our staff, this great staff, is doing its job in making sure that we get resources even beyond taxpayer dollars to make sure that we can provide everything that the library needs using funds from different places so that no one, so that the pressure isn't just on the taxpayer, but but really there's monies and, and, and resources available and we use them here because we prioritize your money as well as those that are given to make sure that we do the best job of stewarding what happens here at the library. Thank you. The next topic is serving a diverse community and we will get, begin with Mr. Essendroff. Oh, sorry. Oh, all good. All good. <laughs> I have had the distinct honor and privilege of spending many evenings away from my family knocking doors over the last two months. And uh, we've literally knocked on thousands of doors. And unfortunately, not everyone's answer, but we've talked to hundreds and hundreds of voters. I have yet to encounter a single voter. And, and I've, I've talked to voters, both genders, all races. I have yet to encounter one who says they've been mistreated or not served well by the Gilborn and Library. Our library does an incredible job of serving people. I, I feel sometimes there are those who preach and use this word diversity very liberally to divide people. Our library does an incredible job of serving our community. Our, our community here in Elgin is just about half Hispanic. And a lot of them are bilingual, but there are so many bilingual services, so many services for the Hispanics, and that's great. We need to encourage them, welcome them into our community with open arms, and we do a great job of that right here at the library. So I, I say, serving a diverse community, keep it up. We're doing a good job. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ms. Garcia, can you share your thoughts on serving a diverse community? Yes. Yes, um, and I agree with Mr. Essendrop for sure. Um, and thinking about this question, I uh, was thinking about all the different kinds of diversity that we have in our community. Uh, yes, we have diversity of gender and of race. Um, and, and I think that because of that, it's very important that the library offer resources in multiple languages, which we do, um, and programming in, in multiple languages, and our newsletter in, in two languages as well, often uh, Spanish sections. That's very important. Um, I also think it's really important that the library is here to support different pe people who have different um, economic diversity. Um, many people use the library for a lot more than books. Um, it's a warm place to be. Um, it's a place that you can access a computer if, or, or internet if you don't have that at home. You can get job training, uh, resume help. Um, th that's a very important thing as well as far as diversity. Also diversity of age. Um, we offer so many programs uh, for people of all ages uh, in every walk of life and uh, I think that's very important to continue. Uh, especially uh, our, our high school space is just incredible. The, the things that you can do over there, uh, it's just I'm, ins I'm so inspired by that space and it's dedicated to that specific age group and then there's children's and then senior programming, the memory cafe. Um, uh, this is all part of diversity as well uh, that I appreciate and, and would want to support. And then diversity of thought as well. <coughs> so uh, we, we are a community of differing views and opinions and perspectives and the library is regularly a place where we can come and share those different views and learn from each other and I believe it's important to protect that space here and um, to offer as many resources in whatever form that comes so that we can educate ourselves and we can learn from each other. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Grafhoff, what are your views on serving a diverse community? I'm going to try to pick this up and see if it, thank you. Um, well, it is, as mentioned already, our, our library serves a great great diversity uh, population, um, not just gender and ethnicity, but ages as well, just like Mrs. Garcia mentioned. Um, during my introduction, I mentioned my about my education, and I did this particular because I went back to school as an adult, to college. So as an adult female learner, one has to learn to juggle many things at once. For me, it meant uh, working. 
attending college, um, being a wife and a mother, so all at the same time. So um, it was not rare to find me at the library four to five nights a week working on my studies. And the library provided me with such a wide range of resources, just like this library does. Um, internet, computers, a quiet place to study and write papers, um, and of course the invaluable help of the knowledgeable staff that works at this library to help me, guide me whenever I needed extra help. For me, that is, it, it is so important. Um, education, I am passionate about education and literacy, therefore, knowing that this library already provides such a diverse services for our communities, it, it's just great. And I would love to be part of it, to continue this work, to serve, uh, to continue the, the programs we already have in place for adults, for teenagers, for women, uh, perhaps extend services for small business owners, find partnerships where we can learn from other organizations to continue to be better. Thank you. Ms. Henderson, what are your thoughts on the serving a diverse community? Well, we serve a very diverse community very well. Um, one of the things that sets this library apart is its, <clears throat> it is its commitment to diversity, its commitment to making sure that there is some service available for everyone, to make sure that we provide programs, spaces, um, even um, books and whatever resources is necessary for the entire community. Um, and for, regardless of your economic status, regardless of your, your race, your age, it doesn't matter, there is something here for you. And our job is to make sure that that continues, to make sure that it is even expanded so now that we have passport services here and we have um, a cafe downstairs and a bank, we have so many different things that are here that, that can meet the needs of this community and we're gonna continue to add to that because this diverse community is an amazing one and this library is here for it. We are here to ensure that you have what you need to, to, for your family in this community. Diversity is Gail Borden Library. Thank you. And Ms. Mednar, what are your views on serving a diverse community? Well, um, first of all, everything Amanda said for sure, because that's pretty much my list that I was going to go down. So thank you for that. Um, I will. <laughs> I, um, I grew up in Chicago. And when I met my husband, and who's sitting over there, and he, um, and it looked like I was gonna have to move to the suburbs. Um, I got very nervous, <laughs> but then we found Elgin, and I was like, okay, I found my people here. Um, that diversity is what I love about Elgin, and I realize that our library district reaches outside of Elgin, but since we're sitting in Elgin right now, I'm just gonna use that. Um, and I've been on the board long enough to know that Back um, when we first moved here and when my kids were little, I don't think we really did serve our diverse community well enough. And we have done an amazing job of turning that around um, just in the lifetime of my children. And I know now we have books in uh, 11 languages here at the library. We, um, and language is just one part of it. I mean, the fact that we um, are a haven for homeless people here in the library, the fact that you can go to the Library of Things and check out devices that some families own in their house but you could never dream of owning, but you can have it in your house because you can get it from the library. These are things that, that make our library the place of equity for all of our, our people in our district. And I'm very proud of how we do that. I, I'll never say that we've done enough. We always have to keep going. I will never take the word diversity lightly. As a white person, it's easy for me to think that that's something you know, that everybody has, you know, but it, it's not. When you're sitting from a place of being different and wanting to see your needs reflected in, the, in what's in the library, that's what's important, and that's what we, continue, we need to continue to bring to our district. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
The third topic is book and program selection, and you may include in that who should decide. We will begin with Ms. Garcia. Uh, so at our board meeting, our last board meeting, which was last week or the week before, we actually had a great conversation that is still rolling around in my head about um, the diversity of our resources. And um, uh, because a particular patron had reached out to me and said, where did all the books go? Um, she was looking for some for her grandkids that she checked out for her kids and they weren't here. And um, that just brings up this, this thinking of um, what, the, what does the library offer? Because it's certainly far more than books. Um, it is music, it is DVDs, it is space, programming, all these things we've talked about. It's the library of things. It's a Wi-Fi hotspot. It's tools for your garden or whatever, cake pans. Um, and, and so I think the, the answer of what should the library provide is that it should provide what the community needs. And um, it is our job to be agile and flexible to respond to those needs. So as the, as the, the, the need or the desire for more digital books, uh, more especially during COVID, e-resources um, went up, we put more funding into e-things, <laughs> digital things. Um, as, uh, and then as COVID has come down and, and we came back to in-person, we shifted online programming back to in-person programming, but there's still a demand for hybrid services. So now we can do things like this and have and have a hybrid event that is both online and in-person. Um, all of this is in a direct response to the community. So who should decide? I believe the community should decide. I think it's the library's job to serve the community by responding to exactly whatever that need is. So in the conclusion of our, of our conversation from our board meeting the other night, is that I actually secretly hope that there's uh, the pendulum swings the other way and there's a rejection of all of these digital things and, and that my kids will grow up saying, I want more books, I want more paper, I don't want an e-reader, I want, I want to hold a book in my hand, um, and that this library will, will in, in tune and in stride uh, respond to that by building up the book collection to meet exactly uh, the needs that are presented by our patrons. Silence your cell phone shirt. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was you did. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Graftaw, what are your views on the book and program selection? Sheesh. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, I agree with Mrs. Garcia. I strongly believe that uh, it should be our community, that we should listen more to our community, invite our families and all um, library card holders to participate in letting us know, getting, being involved, and in, in telling the, the library what the needs are. Um, we should have them uh, obviously voice their opinion on the material that our library provides. But also, it is important to rely on the knowledge and the expertise of the staff because they, uh, they know that's, that's what they do. And they should, um, we should be confident that when they are making the selections, they uh, are knowing what is appro age appropriate, appropriate for our communities, for our population, and as well as the content. So the library, the board is, to be to serve, uh, not to be a burden on for the library as to what should or should not be um, part of the material available that should be decided um, by the staff. Thank you, Ms. Henderson. Uh, what are your thoughts on the book and program selection? Well, I believe that book it. Book selection is very easy. Um, the people decide what they want. When we when they come here, they say, "Hey, do you have this book?" And then we'll say, "Well, you know, we know we don't have it on the shelf, but we know how you can get it. We have an entire resource of digital uh, libraries available to us. So all you have to do is request it, and it will be shipped right here to the library for you to pick it up. Books is an easy one. Programs." What well, is also decided by the people. You just have to voice your opinion, voice what your, your desires. What do you want to have happen here? Tell our librarians, and they'll say, hey, that's a great idea, and they'll work on it to figure out how we can make sure that programs are here. Really, we are here to serve the people. 
and it is up to the people to, to tell us what it is that they want. We as a board, it is not our job to tell you what you want. Our job is to listen and to hear the thoughts and the ideas from the community and see how we can service them. In this era of book burning and banning, it is not our job to do that. It is our job to hear from you, to decide what is best for the community based on what you've told us, and then we work with the library staff to ensure that you get it. This library is here to do just that. We have, we, we're not just a book repository anymore. Now we are a community resource and we will continue to be that for years and years to come. Thank you. Ms. Smednar, can you share your views on book and program selection? Um, yeah, I, I echo everything that has been said so far. And I also think there's one more issue that is kind of interesting to think about from a library perspective, which is the, the programming specifically. You know, um, over the years, I've heard a lot of times how we are just so squeezed for space here because we have so much going on. And um, think about the fact that as a library worker, you are following the trends out there in the library world of you know what we should be bringing to our people. You're listening to what the people in the community are asking for as well. And you're trying to plan um, programs here and guess where, where can we hold this? You know, are we gonna have 20 people? Are we gonna have 200 people? You know, sometimes I've been to programs here where, where the room is overflowing and they're running and getting more chairs and other times we have a room full of chairs and you know, there's 20 people sitting in the front. It's not an easy thing to plan, and um, the thought of, of how much planning goes into all the programming that we have at this library is commendable for the staff and what they do here and what they pull off. And um, they, they n not only are they able to do that in, um, in the way that they do in the building all the time, but the way they shifted and were able to do all that programming during our shutdown down for COVID, was just so impressive. Um, so anyway, my feeling about the programming here is that it is superior, it's, it's stellar. I've seen amazing stuff here from musical concerts to Mr. Freeze with liquid nitrogen, throwing it all around the room, just all kinds of crazy fun stuff. And um, I think we do a really good job of knowing what our community needs and what they're looking for and giving them a place to come in and discuss and learn and, and expand and grow. And um, I, have, I, I give a lot of credit to this library for being at the top of their game on all of that. Stop. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Mr. Yeah, Mr. No Essendorf. Yes, <laughs> we'll give you the last word on book and program selection. I, I feel bad for what I'm about to do because there's been a lot of lighthearted talk, and it's been good. It's been good. A lot of good stuff has just been said. Uh, but I, I guess it's going to be a little bit more dark, and I, I feel bad being the guy to do this. But we, we have a mental health crisis going on in our country, especially among teenagers. Uh, there's certain segments of the population that are attempting suicide at rates of 30 times the general population, succeeding at 19 times the general population. And it, it's disturbing and it's sad. And we, we have a content, content consumption problem, uh, not just as a library, but as individuals. We, we as a society have become very calloused. Uh, so many adults, especially adult men, are struggling and in bondage to something called pornography. We have a society that is so hell-bent on this that we've lost our moral clarity. We've lost our ability to tell ourselves no. We, we're not able to tell our own flesh no. A grown man is not able to say no to himself in the quiet of his own home with his cell phone. And because of that, we have a society that no one says no anymore. Uh, so I am all for listening to the community. There's been a lot of talk about listening to the community. But we also need people that are willing to be courageous and say no about some things. There's a lot of great things that go on in this library, a lot. And my family benefits directly, and I'm so grateful for that. But there is some programming that ought not to go on at this library. And we need to make sure we protect our children, protect our families, and protect our community. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The fourth and final topic will be issues and solutions. Each of you were asked to pick a problem or issue that needs more attention and suggest possible solutions. 
I'm going to ask Ms. Grafthoff to go first. Um, yes, thank you. Just like in every family, every business, there is always um, issues that have to be <laughs> tended to. And um, unfortunately, I believe one of uh, the primary issues that we face, that our library faces currently, is um, our homeless population. And um, I'm sure that this has been, it has been, is not a new issue. It's been here for, for some time now, but it is also important uh, as a board and as a community, as a library to come together uh, with other community partners in finding a solution to this issue. And perhaps, in my opinion, one solution would be to partner with the city council, city council in finding um, other safe and affordable uh, options for our homeless pop population. If, I, if I'm elected, I would be committed to attend and be present um, at the uh, meeting co council meetings to work to see what solutions we can come up with together with them. But um, yes, unfortunately, that would be probably an issue that should be really considered and looked into. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Henderson, what issue did you choose? Um, the only issue that I see before us is um, the is planning for our future, what we're going to do, how we're going to make sure that um, in the next over the next five years, the library will continue to provide what it does for the community. And I say that because obviously over time, uh, we're dealing with an economic issue nationally, internationally. Um, inflation is real. The, the real issue is that, that there will be a time where the costs are going to rise and we're going to have to rise to the occasion to be able to afford some of the things that we're doing now at a later date and what are we going to do about it. And I guess we have to be the people in the room that says, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to raise taxes, I don't want to do that, but there are some decisions that would have to be made. And so we have to begin thinking about that now. How are we going to afford what we're doing now over the next five years? Because the prices are going up, things are happening, and we have to begin thinking how, what are our sustainable practices now that we're gonna be able to, to utilize then when, when costs are extraordinary, but people don't want their taxes raised. Where is the money gonna come from? So those are the things that we have to really sit down and strategize on how we're gonna make sure that we still are able to provide what we do right now when the price for everything doubles, when the prices for everything goes up. So really the issue is, what are the sustainable practices that we are gonna implement now to be able to make sure that we can still do what we're doing five years from now? Thank you. Ms. Bednar, what do you think needs more attention? Well, obviously Tiffany and I sit on the same board because we have the same ideas about, uh, we worry about the same things and that's exactly how I feel. Um, I, I think about the buildings that we now own, and I mean, you can even consider the bookmobile to be almost like a branch library. Um, there's maintenance for these things, and um, just the maintenance alone, yeah, we worry about being able to pay for this in the future. Um, I give a lot of credit to Carol Metal, our CEO. She she reminds me of how I am at our house because when she's walking around the library, you know, she wants everything to look just so. <laughs> and we make it happen on our budget, and I, I give a lot of credit for that. I, I want that to continue always. I, want our, I always want our library to look good. And, you, you know, it costs money. Keeping the grass green costs money. <laughs> um, so, so that is a, a, a real concern of ours as a board of being able to sustain this going forward. Now, some of the things that we've brought in have been money makers, like what we have the, um, the passport service now, which has brought in a lot of money. So that's been a really nice addition that's helped the community and helped us with some revenue. But not everything that we do is going to generate revenue. So 
um, we want to keep giving back to our community what they need, um, but not, but like we just hired a, a, a social worker at the library who I hear is very popular. So um, I, I don't think we're charging for those services. So yeah, you know, we, we want to keep moving forward with what we're giving, but we have to figure out how we're going to pay for it. And that, that is going to be our issue going forward. Thank you. Mr. Essendrop, what issue have you chosen to highlight? Our, our library is a great library. It's been said by so many people besides myself. Uh, we provide so many great resources to people. And uh, we, we have a large homeless encampment right across the river. And they, they come utilize the library. And I'm, I'm so happy they have a place they can come uh, to, to be warm, to be sheltered. Uh, some of them, they come in to work on resumes. They, they, some of these people are not homeless by choice. Okay, it could be addiction, it, whatever the case may be. They want to pull themselves out of it. And uh, <clears throat> I, I've been in the computer lab many times, especially over the summer. Uh, when school is out, those hours that parents are still working, a lot of times in the library, in the computer lab in particular, uh, unattended children end up taking over the lab. And I, I understand children need to be able to explore. They need to be able to have access to computers. They need to be able to learn. Uh, I would like to have separate spaces uh, for, for adults that are working on resumes, adults that are looking for jobs, adults that are doing constructive things to try to improve their lives. It, it really is a distraction, but this library is for them too. Uh, so I would like to have two separate areas. We already have this area over here for the high school. Uh, I think it would be great to have separate computers. Uh, in a separate area, perhaps even uh, with something like Covenant Eyes on it, where it, it, it t tells the parents what exactly is being looked at, uh, with, with strict safe search and all that to keep our kids protected. Uh, I think it would really benefit people that are trying to pull themselves up by their bootstraps, and would also help our kids as well to be in a nice, kid-safe environment. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Garcia. What issue did you choose? Yeah, and you're going to make me choose only one? Yeah. 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 <laughs> one. Uh, well, I want to, first of all, in case there was any confusion, simply say there have been no pornographic um, programming here at the library, and there's certainly no pornographic. Can everyone hear me? There's no porn at the library. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> just making sure that was cleared up. Just but in what's case. in the adult book section? Like, oh, right. Oh, right. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, I also want to echo what Tiffany and Jean have said. Some in specific issues are things like um, finding housing for our bookmobile, which does not have a garage right now. And so being able to take care of that, that's part of the longevity planning. Um, so that's, that's an issue. Um, also along with funding, I think um, building up our foundation. So much of our funding for our, our special events and our exhibits come from our amazing Gail Borden Foundation. Um, and, and that is a, an incredible group of people that and needs to be cultivated and uh, grow as, as members age. We need to grow up new members so that we can continue Continue to have that revenue stream that allows for so much of the incredible program link that, that is not paid for by taxpayers <laughs> at all. Um, uh, I also, uh, the thing that I was actually going to say before all of this was also related to space. Um, I, I, I do think that this is a very practical issue that we have started talking about and that we need to work on um, is utilizing space for, um, for also deep work. And I think that the, the solution to that or part of the solution is um, these cool things that we've seen uh, that are like glass uh, rooms, but they're, bub they're bubbles, they're pods, so they don't take up a lot of floor space. And I actually think we have room here on this floor um, to be able to put a few in, and they're soundproof, and you can see straight through them, so you don't have to use a whole study room, but for one person. Um, and to go along with that, I would love to have a, a rack of um, of laptops that you can check out and bring to any location in the library so you're not just stuck in the computer lab when you are trying to get your work done but there is a laptop you can use and then you can also go into a pod and and use that because so many of our it's very popular our, our study rooms get checked out all the time so I think being able to address that problem with some more private space would be fantastic okay <laughs> thank you <laughs> and finally Ms. Grafoff First. You went first. Oh, I turned my page to. I turned my page too soon. Sorry. Ah, uh, this is because not all of the candidates are here tonight. We have some time, more time than originally anticipated. So I will offer each of you an additional two minutes to add to your remarks on any of the previous topics, 
or to share your views on a topic not covered earlier. We'll begin with Ms. Henderson. <laughs> well, I wanted to say, uh, this is what I didn't get a chance to say, and, and, and Jean started this. I want to first say that we have, um, an, um, we have amazing leadership at the library. Um, Carol Meadows does a, an, an excellent job um, leading us, and really we are in partnership with her. And I, I think this is um, important to note that this is a, a part of why we do what we do, um, because the her, she and her staff they work tirelessly to serve the community, um, and what we want to do is make sure that the things that they propose, the things that they bring to the table, um, that we support them if it's something that needs to be supported. And the truth is, they haven't really brought anything to us that 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 is outrageous, outlandish, or shouldn't be here. They are, are very, very, very good. They are experts in their field, and, and that is the thing that we have that other people Really, I don't think people really realize just how amazing the people that work here are in terms of their expertise. They've been in the business of library, libraries for a very long time, and they have seen things come and go. So I just want to say that as a board member, it has been my pleasure to work with people who know what they're doing. All of us, I'm sure, have been in places where people are idiots, and I'm not going to. I'm serious. <laughs> I, I, I mean that with every fiber of my being. <laughs> but to work with people who know what they're doing, who, who can express it in, a, in an intelligent way, and then show you how this is going to make what we do better, it's been my, it's been my pleasure. So I just wanted to say that I'm glad to work with people here who really care about what we care about and that's what's made my job here on the board very easy for these last six years and I want to continue to do that. Thank you. Ms. Meddar, do you have something to add? Sure. I'll just kind of add on to what Tiffany was saying here. Um, yes, we we're very impressed with the staff. Over the years um, we've had some really fun presentations during our meeting there was a, a trustee several years back who um, coming on board said, you know, I don't really know what the staff here does. So we started this thing where they would come and present and tell us about their uh, department. And it was just fascinating to learn what goes on here, honestly. And the dedication and devotion that they had was just so apparent. Uh, some of them talked way too long, but that's just because they were so excited. Um, <laughs> we had long meetings those nights. But I, I just wanted to add a couple. I wrote this, I wrote like a second introduction. So I just want to read part of it because it, it's just how I feel. I just want to get this out. Um, the stuff that happens at this library that's so amazing that I, I did actually have a list in my alternate. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take credit for any of all of these amazing things that happened over the 18 years I've been on the board. You know, like our, we won the national medal. It's the most prestigious award that a library can win and we got it. Um, I don't remember what year. Do we know? 2009. No, I don't, okay, I almost said that. All right. I don't take credit for any of that because that's not how it works. The role of the trustees is to let our very capable staff do their jobs. And when they report to us once a month, we listen, we discern, we learn, we sometimes vote on things to allow them to move forward with their work and their creative ideas. And this completes the full circle of how our library continues to be so awesome. So what I know is true is that we have a talented, skilled, very open-minded staff along with board leadership that understands its role, when to push back, when to get out of the way. And I'm lucky to share this circle with several other very capable trustees who also understand the responsibility and the limits of serving on this board. And I also know that our staff is made up of dedicated library professionals. And um, I think right now, for the most part, things are going great. And so I don't see any reason to mess with great. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you. Mr. Essendroff, do you have something to add? Always, I guess, right? <laughs> right? I have two minutes. I might as well use it, right? Uh, see if I can hang myself before the end. Uh, but but I, I want to thank you guys for coming out. I, I realize all of you guys have a home you could be at, but you came out here because you guys care. You may not like everyone sitting up here, but you, you care. 
and you're involved in the election process. There, there's not a whole lot about, I guess may, maybe Miss Bednar, there's some about her, but there's not a whole lot about many of us on, on the internet. Not all of us have websites and whatnot. So you came out here to hear from us yourselves. And I think that's admirable. I want to thank you guys for coming out. And even if you don't plan on voting for me, it was a pleasure to spend this evening with you, and I hope you guys uh, have a good time and get out and vote. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Garcia. Yes, excellent point. Please vote. That, that's why we're all here anyway. Um, so thank you for that. Um, this is, I'm like scrambling to try and come up with something cohesive. Um, I, I, I thought <laughs> maybe I should finish the thought that I didn't quite finish about the minimum wage <laughs> because it's been several years already. We knew this law was coming, and so it's been several years of this like incremental increase to make sure that um, all of our employees are paid the correct amount by the time it is the, the, the law, and so that, that is something that we've worked really dil diligently at, and so that also an acknowledgement to our staff um, and planning ahead for all of that. Um, in and then to add inflation to that and even projects that we had on the budget and had to kind of table because construction costs went up uh, and and materials and things. So um, really the, the fiscal responsibility is something I'm really proud of here at Gail Borden. Um, I also wanted to say uh, a, just a bit about partnerships. Um, I'm on the board of the Elgin Chamber of Commerce and also on the board of Elgin Community Bikes. And so both sustainability and small business are very near and dear to my heart. And I love that um, the library has a book bike and um, works with community bikes and that the library, we have a small business librarian and we offer programming about that. Um, so those that's very important to me too. And also our Spanish services just keep expanding and I'm so glad for that and our partnership with Centro de Información um, love that um, and then lastly I think that a leader's job is to cast a vision to build an incredible team to hold them accountable but get out of their way and I think that that is uh, the board's job to do with our staff and um, it's been as Tiffany said an honor and a pleasure and a joy to have done that the last six years um, and I hope to continue to do that to earn your trust as voters and um, to build trust further trust with you and with our staff uh, it would be an honor to continue to serve and uh, as as Mr. Essendrop said please do vote <laughs> thank you thank you and finally Ms. Graffa. Um yes thank you uh, some of the things I didn't have an opportunity to mention before, uh, I take great pleasure in um, using the services of our library. I recently took an Excel class. Uh, I am avid re reader. I love reading books, uh, primarily in English, but I also read in Spanish. As you can tell, Spanish is my, my first language. And I was very pleased and surprised to find a book by Brian Tracy, for those of you who know Brian Tracy is, uh, in Spanish. That was amazing to me. So, um, so yeah, so that was very delightful. Uh, like, um, like Melissa said, our, our Spanish services, and I can only imagine the growth uh, that Jean has seen over the year in, this, in, in that department. Um, from the, when the library many years ago uh, had in place. But yes, it is coming to this library, being a part of it, and the services that are provided by the wonderful staff um, that work here is just, is just very, very uh, delightful. Um, again, it is my passion to serve and help others. That's what I have been doing that's what my education has allowed me to do and the jobs that I have um, done over the, the, the past decade. So it would be my honor to serve um, in the board and represent the South Elgin community, but also the diversity of our communities as well. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for participating in this Meet the Candidates Night and giving the voters a chance to hear your views. For more information on the Gail Borden Public Library candidates, check the voter guide for the 2023 consolidated election on our website, lwvelginarea.org, or use the QR code card available at the information table. The voter guide will also have links to the recording of these and other events. Voting early in person at permanent polling places is open now. 
and voting on election day at your regular assigned polling place will be on April 4th. If you plan to vote early, please note that different sites are open different hours and there may be changes from previous years. You can check our information table by the door or the Kane County Elections website for current information. We hope that this candidate event presented as a public service of the League of Women Voters has been helpful. That concludes tonight's Meet the Candidates Night. I want to thank the candidates for participating, the Gail Borden Library for allowing us to use this room, and for recording the event. I also want to thank the League members who worked to provide this event, and the voters who take the time to watch these events and learn about the candidates in order to make an informed choice. We hope that each and every one of you will vote and encourage your family, friends, and neighbors to do the same. Thank you for coming and good night.